Hey guys, grow the farm up. We are trying to outrun a storm, planting a reverse female split. And as you can see, it's raining on us pretty good. It's been misting for about an hour and the rain is really starting to pick up. And uh, it's so important to get this seed corn timed up right. I mean, look at that, you know. It's so important to get the seed corn timed up right because uh, if you don't have uh, the pollen properly timed, what happens? Well, you only pollinate uh, a fourth or a half or none of the year. And if you only pollinate half of the year, what does that do? Well, it just really changes everything. It screws up the seed size. I mean, if you have an ear that's only got a hundred kernels on it compared to 400, uh, it screws up the seed size, the test weight, the nutrient uptake, the, uh, uh, the, the water uptake, and uh, the nutrient density. Um, and so what we've got here is uh, about five days ago, I planted a female, excuse me, a male row with uh, some male seed with this exact planter. Okay, and I planted row four, and row nine and I used this planter and I moved all the dirt with the furrow openers as you can see and now the neat thing you can look at the furrow openers are not moving you see how the furrow openers are not moving and you see how that is wet dirt out in front of me and how it looks kind of dry uh, you can't really see through the the bad uh, rear windshield wiper but see how it kind of looks dry and actually thrown maybe just a fritter bit of dust for another you know 20 minutes 10 minutes or so um, one thing we learned is that uh, you know move all your dirt when you're planting your uh, your mail you know and don't just use a mail planter use the big 12 or 24 row planter and use your furrow openers to move your dirt. Um, you know, one of the things uh, that comes along with uh, especially hybrid seed corn production is, you know, you, you could, uh, timing is paramount. Timing is the most important thing. I mean, you can plant perfect seeds and yes, you, you have to have a good planter and you have to plant well. You have to plant as perfect as possible. Uh, but you know what, if there is no uh, uh, female silk out when the male pollen is shooting, or if there is no uh, male pollen shooting when the female silk is out, guess what, all that perfect planting is for naught. And boy, it is really starting to mist harder. We've got, uh, we've got, uh, uh, a storm coming in it's predicted to rain for four days and so what we had here is about a 1470 heat unit male and about a 1368 heat unit uh, female so the female is a shorter season so it needs to be planted about a hundred heat units later well, we've acquired about 68, 72 heat units uh, in five days, six days since the uh, mail was planted. And yeah, I know I'm a little early, but on a reverse, it's just that. It's a reverse. It's okay if your mail is a little bit late. In fact, you would rather have your mail pollen be a couple days late than a couple days early because the female silk will hang there uh, for, I've seen silks hang for a week and not die waiting for pollen. I don't recommend that, but it's always better to have your male go in a little late. And on a reverse, see the female, or excuse me, the male is already planted. And so if I plant the female a little bit earlier than the instruction, what's that gonna do? That's naturally gonna make the male uh, late. It's going to make the mail uh, a little bit later. 
Um, you know, it, it, a reverse is exactly that, a reverse. Uh, if you're planting the female first, and let's say the male has a 100 heat unit delay or a one inch upsprout instruction, it's perfectly okay to put that male in at 130 heat units and a 1.5 inch upsprout because then, uh, you know, you've got uh, pollen uh, guaranteed to be there uh, just a couple days after the female silks come out. And it's like everything else, all the silks don't come out in one day. Um, but this is very interesting. Uh, back in the day when I was starting farming and I was real po, uh, I actually used my planter, not this one. I've got an updated planter now, but I actually used my planter as my fertilizer bar and I put on about 25 gallons right in the furrow and I uh, moved all the dirt and what what led me to that decision was uh, growing seed corn and planting these reverses. Um, on these reverses, I look, look at that, I mean I'm running six miles an hour trying to get this done and not a box is bouncing at all because all of the dirt has been moved and uh, I just tell you guys what, sometimes you might be calling me crazy here. Boy, that rain is picking up. It is not looking, it, boy, we are really chasing that rain. But take your planter sometime and go make a few rounds on the end of a field. Don't plan anything. Just, just move some dirt with your furrow openers. Just move the trash out of the way. As you can see, I did here, I didn't move a lot of, I didn't move dirt. I just moved the trash out of the way and really smoothed up uh, where the planter row unit's gonna run across. And uh, I always get the best emergence and the best germination on these uh, reverses. And so that's what led me to basically use my planter as a fertilizer bar. And everybody said, oh, you're crazy. And it, it was hard on the planter. And you know, I, I now have a fertilizer machine um, but we often discuss uh, taking the planters out if we have time and just running them across the fields before you plant. And, uh, you know, you kind of got to readjust them a little bit, but you can leave your true V's in just like you're planting. You can leave uh, everything set. You want to take a little bit of down pressure uh, off of your closing wheels. You don't want to have uh, too much down pressure on your closing wheels. But uh, like I said, uh, you know, I, I came through five, six days ago and planted only rows four and nine. There's row four and there's row nine at about 16,000. And here we are about 75 heat units later and we're planting the female. So what that does is that basically makes the male about 25 heat units later it will shoot its pollen about 25 heat units later than the instruction, which is fine. In the middle of the summer, that's like a day, a day and a half. A heat unit is uh, every hour of the day that is between 55 and 86 degrees. Um, I've always said that uh, heat units, uh, yeah, at 92 degrees, you're still you're still capturing heat units, but the textbook definition is that. The plants will kind of shut down and stop growing uh, at 86 degrees. No, I don't find that to be true. At 95 degrees, they will, uh, they will wilt up. But as you can see here, you have to have perfect, uh, perfect uh, uh, exterior headland boundaries and you have to have it, it, see how it shuts the planter off just perfectly. Uh, you can't plant uh, into your uh, male isolation because you plant male around the entire field. Uh, you can see, and I'll show you here once I get lined up, but you see that right there, that is uh, 12 rows of male planted around the isolation of the female and uh, uh, that is just to isolate uh, any uh, uh, unlike pollen because that guy across the road there you can see why well, you really can't see uh, through this bad uh, back window 
but his corn, he's corn over there, and his corn is about three or four leaves. See if I can get a better view. His corn's about three or four leaves, and so we're time isolated very well, but we're also staying about 300 feet away from his corn, because I cannot allow any of his uh, pollen to uh, blow into my seed corn field here. So uh, just an interesting uh, quick update. We are chasing, or should I say the storm is chasing us and my phone's going off like crazy. I've got a mail planter running just a mile and a half that direction and he's uh, struggling, uh, doing the same thing I'm doing. And uh, you know, we're running 5.5 miles an hour. What do you think? Timing is the most important thing and the radar says we're about to get chased out of here. 6.2, uh, look at that, row units not even moving. And actually, because I moved all the dirt, there is no mud building up on the furrow openers or on the depth gauge wheels. It's really uh, quite a phenomenon. Wow, look at that, we got us a, we got us a fox. Uh, what is that, That that's a fox. Look at that. I wish I could see through the window. I wish I could see through the window. Let's see if we can get a better shot of them. Dang it. Can't get a very good shot through these dang uh, windows. They're all, you know how these tractor, uh, how these uh, dang tractor windshield wipers work. No, not worth a dang. And I mean, we are, you know, look at the planter just covered in, uh, you know, a little bit of rain, mud. And that's the thing I've noticed. A lot of the guys that uh, grow seed for the big, uh, you know, pioneers and DeKalb's of the world, they, you hear a lot of can't, oh, we can't, it's too muddy, that won't work. And, you know, I explained at the beginning of the video, uh, perfect pollination is the key to the highest quality seed. So you gotta be willing to do anything and everything in your power to get that pollination timed up properly. And uh, that is uh, what I'm gonna complete doing. I've got 32 acres on right now. I went ahead and jacked it up to 6.2 miles an hour. I'm looking for about 52 acres. So I got about 20 acres to go and I am doing a it says about 32 acres an hour now so hopefully in about 45 minutes if everything stays together I pull out of this field and uh, you know the thing about a seed corn field is once you start it you have to finish it uh, otherwise you got to start over if I get rained out for five days and I can't get back in all of this, uh, you know, I got to get over to those trees there. All of that will have to be started over. I'll have to replant the male, then wait five days, come back and replant the female, uh, you know, to get the pollination timing right. Once, uh, once you get outside of the pollination timing parameters, uh, you've, you, you're, you just as well start over because you're not going to have, you're, you're going to do all this work Put all this money time effort and labor into it and it's not going to pollinate and so that's uh, you know when i grow up i want to be a seed corn farmer but uh, like i say you guys might be calling me crazy saying what you used to fertilize with your planter you want me to go drag my planter across the ground and wear it out before i plant i just i just throw it out there guys just try it once or twice and you will be amazed at the emergence and the uh, and the even germination. Uh, there is no sidewall compaction uh, because you've already run your true bees through it once and if you scoot over just about an inch because you don't want to tear out that male that you already planted uh, they're really, uh, you know, and you have good down pressure. The sidewall compaction and the seed to soil contact is just impressive. So, uh, you know, call me crazy. Uh, you know, I'm out here doing this stuff. 
So I think it's safe to say I am a little bit crazy, but you got to do that in the seed business. So I'm going to keep uh, trying to outrun the storm. Hopefully the rain and the weather will let me. Better keep rolling. Having fun today, not in the sun. Grow the farm up.